I'm excited to begin this session. We hope that this new reimagined JMM will continue to be a place that unites and supports the whole of the mathematics community. With that, our first presentation is from Catherine Roberts, Executive Director of the AMS. Thank you very much, Martin. I appreciate it. Um, good evening, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, could I have the next slide, please? What you see in the corner there, I'll point out first, that is the new logo for the JMM. So um, if you take a look at it, I hope that you'll like it. It's supposed to be evocative of, of people, different people coming together um, and dancing happily in an infinity sign. Okay, so I wanna chat a little bit about our vision and what it means for the AMS to be the manager of the, of the JMM um, in a partnership kind of a model, because this is a different kind of model. For the last several years, the AMS and the MAA have co -sh have shared this responsibility, and now the AMS will be um, responsible for it. And I want to explain what that means. So, first of all, our vision is to have a collaborative convening of our entire mathematics community. We want to have a program that reflects the full spectrum of interests of our community, and we want programming provided by everyone from for any individual who wants to propose and to have some sort of an event, give a talk, a panel, some other kind of event, use your imagination, is invited to do so and is welcome. We will have social events, recognition ceremonies. We'll also be adding um, professional development opportunities, uh, workshops, and other kinds of things at the JMM. We hope that there'll be something for everyone. We are being particularly attentive to add enhanced programming for early career mathematicians. And also we're thinking a lot about careers um, both within and outside of academe. Next slide. So with AMS being the manager, what that means is that the AMS meetings department will be running the show. Um, we will be selecting and contracting with each city to get the conventions and the hotel spaces that you're used to enjoying. Uh, we'll be providing the central online systems well, where all of our partners and in, where individuals will be able to manage the programming and make their abstract submissions and all that stuff. We'll be managing the meeting registration. We'll be supporting all the, the exhibitors who exhibit in our and the sponsors and all of our partners and all the participants. Um, we'll be creating the, the program itself, the app that goes with the JMM. We'll be coordinating the advertising, the website, all that kind of stuff. And we'll be covering the costs for the audiovisual, meeting rooms, internet, um, insurance for the meeting and that sort of thing. Next slide, please. The governance structure within the AMS is to have, we have three new committees. There's a planning committee that will oversee um, planning, the overall structure of the meeting, the overall schedule for the meeting, um, and how to include the sessions and events from all of the partner organizations. We'll have a program committee that will be reviewing the proposals that are submitted from all of you uh, for panels, workshops, or any other events um, to make sure that they're you know, suitable and we'll work on, on uh, proving those and getting those onto the schedule. We also are anticipating a dramatic increase in the number of proposals for special sessions and contributed paper sessions. Uh, those of you who would think to yourself, ooh, this is a thing I wanna do that I would go to the MAA to propose, or ooh, this is a thing I'd go to the AMS to propose. All those people will be now coming to the to the central portal for the JMM and putting those in. So we have a committee that will be um, screening those and helping schedule all those sessions because we know there'll be a, a lot of them. Next slide, please. We have a partnership model with uh, sister societies and, and that is organized around four different tiers, A, B, C, and D, and each level a being the highest level, um, you know, has, has varying degrees of um, agreements with us, varying degrees of JMM programming that they're promising to provide to each of the JMMs, varying discounts on exhibit hall booth space, um, varying levels of engagement with activity with, uh, with the governance um, and different kinds of discounts or incentives that might be available for their members and also different levels of recognition. Next slide. Next slide, please. Thanks. So um, for the past year, I've been uh, and very much enjoying having conversations with a number of our sister societies and um, we are onboarding various partners. Now you're gonna hear today from the partners that you see listed on this 
grid, although that's only the number of partners we have so far. So there are other organizations that engage with the JMM that may or may not be represented with a formal partnership. Um, for example, the MAA will still be holding its um, AMS MAA joint invited address. They'll still be doing the Porter lecture that is co-sponsored between AMS, SIAM, and, um, and the MAA. They'll still be having their project next activities here. So whether or not they're listed as a formal partner, that's still, um, we're still having conversations about that. Um, and, and it is not required that there be a partnership or that you as an individual be affiliated with a particular partner in order to contribute programming to the event. So for example, just this afternoon, I was having a conversation with somebody who is involved in section A at the AAAS. And the you know, AAAS is very interested in having a regular special session at the JMM to feature talks by the new AAAS fellows who are in, in the math section. So that's something that you may see on the schedule just as a standard thing, whether or not the AAAS ends up, ends up getting to the point where they're a formal partner. So it's a very flexible, and we really want to just signal that we're super welcoming to everybody. Next slide, please. So this is a deadline that I just want to put in front of you because it's it might seem very early, but if you're planning on participating in next January's meeting, which is in Seattle, the, the deadline is April 7th, and you'll hear more about that when you when Tarina speaks about the AMS. But if you're thinking of proposing a special session or proposing a panel or a workshop or some other like event at the meeting, you need to let us know by April 7th. Okay, if you're just going to be the abstract deadline for like giving a talk and stuff will be later on, um, but, it, but it's, it's early. Um, so I just wanted to put that out front and you'll hear it. It'll be reinforced throughout this, this hour. Next slide. And I think that's it for me. So Martin. All right, greetings. I'm Tarina Lewis, the Associate Executive Director of Meetings and Professional Services at the American Mathematical Society. The AMS is thrilled to share this space and time with our 10 partners in the mathematical community who are all here to learn about GMM 2022. AMS leadership has committed to the principle that the joint mathematics meetings will strive to represent a full spectrum of ideas of the mathematical community and have added new sessions to the program. The AMS banquet will be replaced with a day one welcoming reception that will feature our partners and set the tone for an inclusive environment. Two new lectures that will target a broad audience have been added to the program, the AMS lecture on education and the, AM, the AMS Erdos expository lecture. In addition, two volunteer committees charged with reviewing proposals were formed. Next slide. And one more time. All right. If I am to be totally honest, in which I have no reason not to. I don't know why I keep stopping. All right, we're good. <laughs> okay, I'll keep going. If I'm to be totally honest, in which I have no reason not to, in simplest terms, there's a, there is an apparent awareness of trust gaps that exist between communities, especially minoritized communities, and the AMS, which may discourage broad participation. So I ask, is having a seat at the table enough? Just ponder for a moment. Having a seat at the table infers that I invite you to my house to play by my house rules. Is that enough? The mere connotation of an invite implies superiority. Our approach at the AMS is to weaken trust gaps by preparing a new table, one that is created for mathematicians by mathematicians because it is human nature to thrive in environments that have been prepared for you. Next slide, next. Joint in JMM purposefully comprises a collection of partner societies and organizations 
that you all love. Our partners are committed to hosting dynamic programmatic sessions. There are currently 10 partners, and we look forward to increasing this number by adding organizations that already provide programming for JMM and others. Next. To encourage collaboration within the mathematical community, when proposals or abstracts are submitted, a top level mathematics subject classification code or the expanded classification system newly adopted for JMM can be used. The expanded top level categories include teaching and learning, recreational mathematics, professional development and professional concerns, and wider issues. Next slide. The inclusion of diverse perspectives on issues that are near and dear to, the math to mathematicians will be accepted through the submission of proposals. A committee of volunteers with representation from some partners will develop a standard way for vetting such proposals. Individuals or groups are asked to assist with ensuring that JMM 2022 is truly reimagined by proposing sessions. And the next one is already up. Stay tuned to AMS communication outlets and partner websites for more information and updates as it will take all of us to turn the wheel. Next. Leaving aside all personal feelings, the joint mathematics meetings offer a place for mathematicians to make memories, visit friends, meet with collaborators, find jobs, network, and to celebrate the advancement of mathematics, but also to criticize the lack thereof. No matter your reason for attending the AMS, for attending, the AMS appreciates your commitment despite some of your feelings of unrest. We ask for your help in preparing this new table for JMM 2022. Please visit our uh, website for guidelines to propose ideas no later than April 7th, and that's 2021. I'm sorry, I'm still stuck in 2020. Your participation is not only requested and valued, it is essential for diversifying JMM programming to attract a broad range of mathematicians. Again, I'm Tarina Lewis. We look forward to communicating to working with the entire mathematical community. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Tarina. Um, I think it would be a good time to uh, circle back to Jared's. Uh, so we have the AMS present first before, before our partners. So Jared, uh, do you wanna go, if the tech person could go back uh, to the start of Jared's, which is six slides back? Sure. Um, anyway, in the, uh, until now, the JMM program has the main part of the program has had two parts. There's the AMS program and the MAA program. And even though there is no clear division line between the subject matters, and, you know, there is a pretty well understood uh, informal division of labor with the AMS uh, emphasizing um, research mathematics and the MAA emphasizing expository mathematics and teaching and uh, related topics. So uh, in the future, there will no longer be an MAA program, but as we've already heard, the AMS is committed to uh, continuing to offer a full range of uh, sessions at, at the uh, JMM and um, wants to make it possible for those who've been involved in MAA sessions in the past to uh, continue to do similar things in the future. So I'm, I'm going to talk about two sort of technical aspects of how uh, that transition is going to work, how it's gonna be possible for uh, people to uh, propose and run sessions in, in a wider uh, variety of topics. So uh, first of all, I, I need to say a word about paper sessions. Um, the AMS has, um, two kinds of uh, paper sessions. There are contributed paper sessions in which there are, uh, all the talks are contributed. There are four 
talks per hour scheduled by the AMS Associate Secretary. And then there are special sessions in which there are only two talks per hour. Uh, a special session, as we know, is, has a, an organizer who proposes it. Um, and most of the talks are invited by the organizer. Now, the MAA has three kinds of um, paper sessions. The general contributed paper sessions are uh, very uh, much equivalent to the AMS contributed paper session. So there will not be much change there. But um, there are two other kinds of paper sessions that the MAA has run. There are themed contributed paper sessions and invited paper sessions. Now, a, a themed contributed paper session is proposed by an organizer who proposes a theme. Uh, that organizer then uh, schedules the talks, but all of the talks are contributed and there are three talks per hour. Um, the the uh, organizer also has the option of inviting uh, some talks to make sure that um, the, the session uh, covers, you know, is covered completely. But um, they, there are also invited paper sessions. Those are just two talks per hour. The organizer there invites everyone and, um, and puts together a, a package of four to six talks uh, that are closely related and, and organized. So um, those kinds of sessions will no longer be offered in the future. But if you have um, organized a themed contributed paper session, an MAA themed contributed paper session or an MAA invited paper session, uh, you have the option now of uh, proposing a special session. Um, they will, there will be some adjustment that has to be made. Um, there, there are trade-offs. On the upside, uh, an organizer has a, a lot more control over the program, over the schedule and the speakers in, uh, in a special session. And also the talks are longer. So um, that, those are the, the positives. On the downside, uh, the organizers will not be able to um, uh, schedule as many talks. Uh, the theme contributed paper sessions are contributed paper sessions and uh, pretty much all of the uh, talks that were submitted in the past have been accepted if they fit the, the theme of the session. So um, MAA organizers need to be aware of those changes. The main thing I, I want to talk about is this uh, expanded um, classification system that's already been mentioned. Can we have the next slide? Um, so when a, an AMS session is proposed, the organizers uh, are asked to supply a, one of the top level codes from the mathematical sciences a mathematical uh, sciences classification system. Um, those codes, the existing codes, cover all of research mathematics, but they don't cover all of the things that have, the kinds of topics that have been covered in MAA sessions in the past. So a committee was appointed to expand that classification system. And I was a member of that committee. Um, we came up with four additional uh, top level codes. Most of the two digit numbers had been used, so we used three digit numbers. And uh, the, these titles have already been, uh, been mentioned. Uh, 101 is teaching and learning, 102 is recreational mathematics, 104 professional development and professional concerns, and 10, uh, there's a typo there. Obviously, what, it should be 103, professional development and professional concerns, and 104 is wider concerns. The wider concerns are things like relationships with other disciplines or um, public policy, things of that sort. Um, when, when you propose a session, you will be asked to provide an, a top-level code, either one of the existing two 
digit codes or one of these new three digit codes. When you submit an abstract for a talk or a presentation, you'll be asked to uh, submit uh, one of the lower level codes. So within each of these categories, there are, um, there are subcategories. Could we have the next slide, please? So um, within the 101 category, there are uh, lettered sections. Uh, 101A and B are about teaching of uh, specific subjects, you know, like teaching topology or teaching developmental mathematics. Uh, 101C is about uh, different ways of teaching. Um, so I'm just showing this as an example. Um, you can find the, uh, the complete um, classification system online, but this just illustrates the kind of things you'll find. So, um, you know, if you want to have a session on uh, active learning or uh, writing in mathematics or flipped classrooms, you will use one of these codes. Um, so, submit, if you, for example, if you submit a paper uh, uh, about teaching in a flipped classroom, you would use the code 101C56. You'll notice that there's space, we left space between these numbers uh, so that um, this can grow in the future. But we did look at all of the sessions that have been offered at recent JMMs, and we think all of them are covered by uh, the categories that we uh, listed here. Um, this will clearly have to grow. For example, when I look at it now, I see that we have one category for online courses, but you know, the recent uh, pandemic has really changed our thinking about online courses, so that may need to be expanded. But um, if you can't find a code that fits what you want to do exactly, in every section we've included this number 99, none of the above, but in this section. So you can always use that code if necessary. Okay, I think my, my time is up. Thank you very much, Jared. Um, so Diane, could you advance to slide number 17 for Richard O'Moore's talk? From Siam, that's good. So uh, our next speaker is Richard O'Moore from the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. Richard? Thanks, Martin. Hello, everybody. My name is Richard Moore. I'm the Director of Programs and Services at the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to speak on behalf of SIAM today. Suzanne Weeks, uh, SIAM's new Executive Director, in fact, she just started formally this week, uh, sends her apologies for not being able to attend due to a conflict. For those not familiar with SIAM, it is an international membership society whose mission is to serve the applied and industrial math communities. Uh, we have over 14,500 members worldwide, uh, run up to 15 conferences a year, and have a suite of 18 highly cited journals. Um, can I go to the next slide, please? So SIAM has been a participant in JMM since the late 90s. Uh, we started in around 1999 with joint sessions. Uh, we had some sessions with GAM, other sessions with MAA and AMS. Um, and that led to a formal agreement starting in 2002 uh, which will now be its 20th year and its ultimate year as we move on to a new agreement for 2022. Uh, this agreement has Siam provide an invited speaker. So you see uh, Philea Zarafopoulou uh, in your top right there, um, sp who spoke yesterday. A uh, number of mini symposia, typically that, typically that number is eight, uh, and a number of joint sessions organized with AMS and MAA. Uh, including the Hrabowski Gates Tapia McBay lecture. So you see Erica Graham picture there in the middle uh, of your right uh, on the screen. Um, and, uh, and the panel associated with the HGTM uh, lecture as well. Uh, there's also the AMS MAA SIAM special session on research in math by undergraduates and post -bac students. Uh, and of course the MAA AMS SIAM Porter lecture uh, whose speaker was, uh, is, will be tomorrow. Trecha Jackson picture there in the bottom right uh, at 3 p.m. Um, that Catherine mentioned earlier. Um, let's, uh, oh, and uh, we have a committee that oversees the content uh, that SIAM provides to the JMM, uh, and that's overseen by our VP for programs, uh, Jim Nagy in this case. Uh, we have a booth presence for SIAM authors 
uh, where our publications personnel um, interface with, with authors interested in, in, interested in publishing with SIAM. Can I move to the next slide, please? So starting in uh, 2022 at JM22 next year in Seattle, SIAM will be a tier A partner. Uh, that means we'll have a footprint to JMM that starts at a comparable level to what is in place now in terms of programming, but with more potential for growth. Uh, and I can answer more questions about our ideas on the potential for that growth uh, a little later, maybe if there are questions. Uh, but it also includes more visibility at the meeting. Uh, it includes more influence over the program. Uh, so importantly, that includes an appointee to the JMM program committee, which we're excited to, um, to have. And it also includes a contribution to the opening reception. Uh, so if you saw in the chat, Catherine posted that it'll be a, a very fun reception. So we're looking forward to contributing to that. Uh, and we'll also have a chance to host our own reception, which will be thematic. Uh, we're still exploring what exactly that theme will be, whether we'll, uh, we'll organize a theme more in Siam's wheelhouse, focusing on maybe careers outside of the academy or, or something uh, very industrially focused, uh, or whether we'll, we'll expand in a direction that's more uh, outside of Siam's wheelhouse uh, in, in the interest of, of broadening our horizons. We haven't decided yet, but we're very much looking forward to it. Uh, and we're very much excited by the opportunities it presents for us. Uh, so, um, uh, oh, and we'll also have an expanded booth presence. Um, I, again, that's a matter for discussion at this point as to what form that'll take. Of course, we'll have our publications people there, um, but we might expand it to, um, to address career options a little more than our current presence at JMM. Uh, so with that, I'll just say we're very excited to participate in this reimagined JMM. Uh, we very much look forward to seeing how it evolves in this new phase of its history. And thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Richard. Our next speaker is uh, Darla Kramer. So I'm the executive director for the Association for Women in Mathematics. And that is, a, we are 50 years old this year. The purpose of the AWM is to encourage women and girls to study and have active careers in mathematical sciences. And while we've been around for 50 years, I, I still feel like even, even now we're very relevant. And so, so especially in, in the time of COVID, it's, it's been a rough year for women in math. Um, so we have lots of programs at lots of different levels. And um, most notably, we have programs for uh, research mathematicians. They have a presence at the, the meeting here. Uh, these research networks grew out of uh, uh, collaboration conferences that are hosted by the math institutes. We have about 25 research networks right now in various fields of mathematics and, and um, more are being added all the time. Uh, we give awards for women in mathematical sciences, and we have a policy, a very active policy and advocacy committee who advocates on behalf of all sciences at the national level, and, and they develop policies that we hope will be models for how to behave in, in the mathematical sciences and, and how to treat one another. So um, we have mentoring networks that link, link women at various stages of their careers. Uh, it, they are designed to be someone who mentors, uh, so one can sign up as a high school student or as a professional in mathematics and be linked with someone else who has a common interest. And, and you can be on the mentoring side or the non-mentoring side or the mentee side. So those have been going for quite a while. I'm not quite sure how long. And we have uh, an active student chapter pro uh, program. We have about 150 student chapters and they're, they're really fantastic. They, they do a lot of stuff at their local, local level, scientific stuff and community building stuff and education stuff and volunteers in their community. So we're very proud of our student chapters. And right now there's an essay contest for students in high school and undergraduates. The deadline for this is February 1st. So if you have a student who wants to write an essay about a female mathematician, they have a couple of weeks to do it. Next, please. Um, so what do we do at the, at the JMM? Well, well, we'll continue to do the things we are doing in addition to having a, a bigger presence because we've signed on as a level A partner 
and we're excited about this. Uh, currently, we have a, a workshop organized with one of the research networks that tends to run on Saturdays. It's two special sessions, and this year it's the uh, workshop on women in analysis. These workshops also happen at that SIAM national meeting. And um, the, the one coming up in this summer will be on control theory and partial differential equations. So it's a great way for, for women to get their work uh, recognized. Uh, the, the graduate student poster session is held in conjunction with the, the workshop and the AWM provides funding for students to, to travel and to present their research. Uh, it's a competitive workshop, it's a competitive poster session, so they have to apply. Um, there aren't that many applications. So if you have students who, who want to present their work, please have them look at, look at the graduate, the AWM competition. So that's happening right now. Uh, there, there's a prize and the prize is uh, a visit to one of the institutes. So it's a really great prize for getting, getting graduate students grounded in the, the society, in the culture. So we also have panel discussions. Usually we have a, a career panel and we have other panels that people organize. This year we had one on equity, ethics, and bias in mathematics. And we had one celebrating our 50th anniversary AWM through the decades where, where the presidents reflected on all the exciting things that happened during their time at the AWM. Uh, we have other sessions. Those sessions include uh, include work special sessions and meetings in cooperation with the AWM. And we invite any, any other organization to organize one of these. The requirement is that they promote women in mathematics. So there, there would be a certain number of women speakers in your session. We're always happy to, to cooperate with other organizations for getting the word out about mathematics done by women. Um, this year, there were two women of color in applied mathematics, applied math and analysis, and women of color in topology and algebra. And we are also expanding our, our presence on workshops, creating a welcoming environment. Uh, and in January 2020 in Denver, there was a workshop hosted by the, that was run by the Power Play acting troupe. It was an interactive, uh, an interactive presentation on, on unconscious bias and, and free of her, and harassment. And we're looking at expanding that to have more such events to help bring a different perspective to the AMA. Next, please. And we also have special lectures, awards, and social events. Uh, we will continue to offer the Norther Lecture. This has been going on since 1980. And we will have continued to award prizes to uh, women mostly. Uh, the Berman Research Prize is a prize in geometry and topology. The Microsoft Research Prize is in algebra and number theory. Sadowski Research Prize is in analysis. We have a prize for mathematical mathematics education. Um, named after Louise Hay, and we have a prize for men mentoring named after Gwen hum Humphreys. Uh, we have some AWM specific prizes. The service awards are for our volunteers. The student chapter awards are for the student chapters. There are four categories. Um, I can't remember exactly what they are right now, but, but um, we gave five awards this year because they were doing such great stuff. The dissertation prizes are for outstanding dissertations. We typically give three of those. And the Schaefer Mathematics Prize is for undergraduate research or undergraduate work, but outstanding undergraduate. And then we've just started an AWM Fellows Program for people who are ex exceptionally good at, um, at promoting women in mathematics. And of course, there's the longstanding social highlight of the JMM is the AWM reception, which has been happening after the Gibbs lecture, but this tends to be pretty late. And so we're looking for a new and better time for it. So look for that. 
it's happening right after this session. So please stop by and, and visit with us. You'll have to bring your own beverage at this time, so, but we'll be there. And the mentoring luncheon is another thing that's an, a different kind of activity. This is held in conjunction with the workshop. It's an opportunity for the graduate students and faculty to get together in an informal setting and, and get some advice or complain about their colleagues or, or, or just get to know one another. And that's it. Thank you very, very much, Darla. So uh, our next presenter is Ron Wasserstein, the Executive Director of the American Statistical Association. Ron? Thank you, Martin. I bring you greetings on behalf of the uh, leadership of the ASA, uh, and especially also my colleagues who are um, in this session, uh, Donald Lund, uh, my staff colleague at ASA, Jian Lee, who is at the University of Florida, is a distinguished um, member of our board, and is on the J, uh, JMM Program Committee. The American Statistical Association is the largest community of statisticians in the world. It's also the second oldest professional society in the United States. We were formed in 1839. Only the American Philosophical Society is older and it was founded by Ben Franklin. So not easy to beat that. Um, we're about promoting the practice and profession of statistics and we're excited to have the opportunity to do that uh, in uh, the new reimagined JMM. Next slide. It's a rare opportunity to thoroughly reimagine something, uh, especially something with such a long history as the joint math meeting. So it's very exciting that the AMS is doing this and that the ASA and all these other organizations are invited to be a part. Um, ASA and AMS have a long history of uh, collaboration with one another, as well as uh, a significant uh, overlap in membership. The ASA has many interests, but in terms of things that collide nicely with uh, the activities of JSM, it's certainly uh, uh, educational support, um, building uh, leaders uh, from early career up to every level, uh, and uh, advancing the profession are all things that are uh, easily recognizable as, as features of the joint math meetings, and they will th they're things that we will be able to bring to the table um, when, when we're part of this in the coming year. Next slide. We have in mind, of course, um, technical sessions and, um, and such that, uh, that everyone else uh, is planning to have, uh, poster sessions. We hope to bring also some opportunities for professional development that will be valuable to people regardless of where they are in their career. So you see some uh, examples here. Uh, one of them that uh, Donna and I are especially excited about uh, is the uh, course we have to prepare people to be a, a statistical expert witness, although it would certainly uh, modify easily enough uh, to be more general than just statisticians, but that's the, the gist of the course, and you see some other ideas that we have. And at the very top of the list of things that I'm excited about uh, for our opportunity to be a part of the joint math meetings is that we will uh, host a, a JEDI outreach group reception where it's an opportunity to, to network with one another, to, to build community, and to share our mutual efforts in justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. The joint math meetings are a just a grand, a big celebration of the mathematical sciences and the ASA looks forward to being a part of it starting in 2022. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much, Ron. Our, our next presenter is Omaida Ortega from the National Association of Mathematicians. Omaida. Hi, thank you so much, Martin. Um, I want to say hello and welcome to everyone who took the time out of their day to attend this session. I want to thank the organizers also for giving me the time to speak today. Um, I'm very excited to tell you about the future of 
the National Association of Mathematicians participation within the JMM. And so you can advance to the next slide. Thank you. So um, the mission of the National Association of Mathematicians um, is that is to essentially to promote uh, excellence in mathematics. And so um, this could be with respect to research or respect to teaching, but that is really the main theme and also to increase diversity within mathematics. Okay, this organization is a nonprofit that was founded in 1969. So we're celebrating our 52nd anniversary this year. And our organization is open to all persons interested in the mission and purpose of NAM, which is promoting excellence in the mathematical sciences and promoting the mathematical development of all underrepresented minorities. And there, we have five major goals that are included um, within our mission statement. And as I had mentioned, programming is a big part of that. And so we're very excited to join um, as a level A partner in the future of the joint mathematics meetings. And so we do intend to continue uh, the same level of programming that we have and, and to increase that. And so we're still exploring exactly those avenues. Um, but I had mentioned there were five main goals. The first being programming. Uh, the second has to do specifically with professional development. And this would be research focused professional development. Our third major goal is again, professional development, but looking towards teaching and um, creating, uh, doing curriculum development and, and education focused. Our fourth major goal is advocacy. And, you know, especially now this, uh, this goal has become highlighted and has become a bit more magnified. And so for that reason, we will be focusing a bit more on advocacy as well within our organization. And then our last major goal is really just to increase the awareness of issues that are of importance to the mathematical community, uh, regardless of what those might be. Can you advance to the next slide? Thank you. So I want to just assure everyone, um, NAM will continue with the same signature programs that it has in the past at the joint math meetings. We have no intention of reducing the amount of programming that we're doing. In fact, we're going to be increasing that program. So you can continue to expect to see the NAM Haynes Granville Brown session for recent PhD students, um, recent doctoral recipients, I mean to say. They will continue to be the Cox Talbot Address, the Clater Woodard Lecture, um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, the Stephen Shabazz Teaching Award. So we're going to continue to give the awards that we have in the past, and we are investigating new awards that we will be giving at the joint math meetings. Um, we traditionally hold a panel discussion every year. We are not doing that this year, and that's really just related to um, the switch to virtual, the uh, shelter in place order that exists. Um, and so the panel discussion is not happening this year, but it, it happens annually and will certainly happen in 2022. Uh, one of my favorite things to organize and to attend as well, that is um, organized by the National Association of Mathematicians is the NAM banquet and reception that happens usually on uh, Friday evening. Um, so we cannot promise that our calendar will be a sa the same as it has been in the past, but we will do our best to sort of keep to those to that timetable. We'll see what happens there. Uh, NAM also holds both a board meeting uh, that happened yesterday and a business meeting that will happen tomorrow at all of uh, the JMMs. And so NAM is going to continue to provide this programming. Um, and also we do have co-sponsored activities. I do want to highlight that there is the AMS NAM joint special session going on right now that is celebrating the mathematical legacy of Dr. James Donaldson. Um, I've been in that all this morning and it's been really fantastic to hear people's remembrances of uh, Dr. Donaldson. Um, but as I was saying, we're going to continue to offer the same programming that you expect um, in the coming years. Can you advance the slide, please? Uh, the only change moving forward will be that NAM will now be a level A partner. So as a level A partner, um, that means, you know, we will still be, you know, providing a lot of programming. We're going to be using the joint math meetings as sort of our major national meeting. 
where we can bring in all of our members and hold a lot of our uh, larger events. Um, additionally, and this is a great benefit as a level A member, NAM members will now be receiving a discount when they register for the joint math meetings. And so uh, we're very excited about this new partnership and we're really looking forward to the JMM in 2022 in Seattle. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amade. Okay, our next presenter is Russell Miller, the Secretary Treasurer of the Association of Symbol Symbolic Logic. Yes, greetings, and I hope you can all hear me here. Um, so I am here representing the Association for Symbolic Logic, which many of you may not be totally familiar with. So let me start by telling you who we are. We are, as the slide says, the Professional Society for Logicians. Now that means mainly mathematical logic, but very specifically also including logic in philosophy and in computer science. And so we publish journals. You see the list here, the Journal of Symbolic Logic, the Review of Symbolic Logic are both research journals and the Bulletin of Symbolic Logic a little more along the lines of the notices of the AMS. It's more expository and updates and notices. Um, two book series as well with volumes coming out periodically, all of this by Cambridge University Press. Um, we run a number of meetings around the world for logicians. The two main ones, the North American annual meeting every spring, and then the logic colloquium in Europe every summer, and then every two years, the Asian logic conference, and every two or three years in Latin America, the Symposio Latinoamericano de Logica Matematica. Um, as this suggests, we are an international organization. Um, the A in ASL does not stand for American, contrary to some impressions. Um, we have approximately a thousand members worldwide of 40% or so are US based. Um, as it happens right now, all four of us officers listed here are based in the US. Um, that's a freak. It's how it worked out at the moment. It's likely to change again within a few years. Um, so I can tell you we were founded in 1936 as logic was coming into its own very much in mathematics. 1936 is in fact the year that um, Alan Turing wrote the paper in which he defined what came to be called the Turing machine. And if we can move forward to the next slide, I will tell you what we have traditionally done here at the joint math meetings. Um, so the format and continuing this year insofar as it can in a virtual meeting, it's pretty much the same. Our traditional format has been to have a two day sub meeting. So normally this is Friday and Saturday, the last two days of the JMM. And characteristically, it features approximately seven invited talks by logicians, a, a session with contributed talks, which is going on right now, in fact, and I'm missing it, I'm sorry. Um, at times, a tutorial, a panel discussion, whatever that year's committee thinks is appropriate. Um, it has to be said that that is somewhat a self-contained meeting. It occurs, you know, on site, you know, in the, whichever convention center it is that year, except this year. Um, and so we're, we're very much physically in the JMM, but for those two days, we're a little bit off by ourselves. And this has not seemed ideal. Now, to make this better, um, the AMS and, and in the past, the MAA have often approved special sessions jointly with the ASL. Um, these are held on one or both of the first two days, one or two such sessions. Um, there was a very nice one just yesterday um, uh, on computability theory. And the, the logicians who come to the JMM very commonly do come for all four days. So there is plenty of time for engaging with the rest of the mathematical community. Um, that to our mind, that's really the purpose of being at the JMM. I mean, the other meetings that I mentioned on the previous slide were all specifically logic meetings. Um, the JMM is our opportunity to engage with the mathematics community. We have something somewhat similar at an American Philosophical Association meeting every year 
joining in with the philosophy community. Um, so that's that's been the way things have gone for the last few years. Last year, we were very happy that Professor Karen Lang of Wellesley College was invited to give an, a, an AMS MAA joint invited address and did it very nicely. Um, if we can go one more slide, I will tell you what we plan to do in the future. Um, first of all, we plan to keep doing what we're doing now, having this two-day sub-meeting um, and the way we've done it, it, it works quite nicely. There doesn't seem any reason to change with the, to mess with that. Um, we do plan to introduce some sort of tutorial, um, most likely during the, the first two days, maybe two, a two hour tutorial, but ideally in two separate sessions, possibly two separate days. Um, and to, to the, the specific goal of this will be for a particular senior mathematician, probably logician, to explain how logic has been used in some specific area of mathematics. Um, and so the idea, of course, here is that this being the JMM, we should try to integrate more with the mathematical community, which, as I said, has not always happened perfectly in the past. Um, and invite people in to hear what logic can do and also get some of us thinking about how logic can reach out into the rest of mathematics more. Um, part of the idea of having two separate sessions is to allow some time afterwards for networking and socializing and, you know, get hoping that the logicians and the folks, especially from whatever particular mathematical topic it is, may have a chance to get to know each other somewhat better. Um, we've never had much of a presence in the exhibit hall and that we will, we still will not have any particular booth of our own. We will be a level B partner, which seems appropriate. Um, what will happen is that our books and journals will be displayed as they always have been by Cambridge University Press. And we'll see how this plays out. But in the past, they have held ASL gatherings at their booth and given some opportunity for socializing, meeting editors from book series or things like this. Um, and we certainly hope to continue that. That's at the discretion of CUP, of course, but they've always been supportive and there's no reason to suppose that will change. Um, so that's our plan. Um, certainly, if there is anybody here with ideas to contribute, we're very happy to hear them. And this, this is the opportunity this year, this coming year, to, to make changes and implement them right here and right now as the JMM changes. So we would all be delighted to hear from you. Um, you, you can find the ASL website, aslonline.org. Um, if you Google ASL, it will first point you to American Sign Language. I'm sorry about that, but that's how it is. Um, but anybody with ideas, by all means, go there, get in touch with us, let us know what you're thinking, or just ask questions right now. I'll be around during the question session. Till then, thanks you very much. Thank you very much, Russell. Um, our next presenter is Catherine Roberts again, who's going to talk on behalf of Pi Mu Epsilon. Catherine? Hi, thanks. Um, I'm sorry, Pi Mu Epsilon was unable to send a representative, but they are delighted to be joining the, the uh, JMM as a level C partner. And I just have one slide here to let you know that this is um, Pi Mu Epsilon, if you don't know about it already, is a National Collegiate Mathematics Honorary Society. So undergraduate math majors qualify um, to be able to um, become members of Pi Mu Epsilon. Their mission is to promote scholarship in mathematics and undergraduate participation in national conferences. Pi Mu Epsilon has always had a presence at um, the JMM um, and at MathFest and, and at other meetings. Um, what will be new with their partnership is that they will now be um, with some logistics, logistic support from the AMS, um, handling the undergraduate student research poster session. So that's a session that the MAA has historically been responsible for, and now Pi Mu Epsilon will be responsible for that. Um, the AMS has been able to secure funding for the next uh, couple of years from the National Science Foundation to offer travel uh, funds to undergraduates who are participating in this poster session as well. 
Pi Mu Epsilon also has, uh, a, has offered to hold a session on day one, the afternoon on Wednesday um, for students, for basically for undergraduates to help them figure out how to navigate such a large and uh, a large meeting. So uh, it's called What Every Student Should Know About the JMM and that will be offered in the afternoons for, for, to help orient uh, newcomers and students to our, to our events. And that's it, Martin. Thank you very much, Catherine. Our next speaker is Jen Murawski, who's going to speak on behalf of MSRI. Hi, uh, my uh, our deputy director, Ellen Barcelo, has been able to join us um, from the current events bulletin. So, Ellen, would you like to introduce MSRI, or would you like me to begin? No, I think I'm happy. So you're you all uh, ready? Okay, no problem. <laughs> Well, thank you. Ellen and I are happy to be here and our director, David, as uh, uh, David Eisenbud is uh, running the current events bulletin concurrently. So he uh, wishes everyone well and is sorry that he can't be here to join us. Um, for those who aren't familiar with MSRI, um, we are a independent nonprofit research institute um, overlooking the campus of UC Berkeley. Uh, we receive funding from the National Science Foundation as one of the math institutes, um, but also uh, over 100 academic sponsors in the United States and worldwide, as well as private foundations and funders. Uh, do you want to advance to the next slide? Thank you. So as part of our mission to foster research and develop talent, um, MSRI hosts uh, special sessions um, at the AMS as well as uh, additional programming in partnership with the other NSF funded uh, and other math institutes. Um, uh, just I'll put in a plug while we're here to say that um, MSRI is also hosting the next National Math Festival, which is coming up this spring as part of our outreach mission. And of course, our number file uh, channel on YouTube and um, our film, which debuted at the last JMM, uh, which was uh, Secrets of the Surface, the Mathematical Vision of Mario Mirzakani. So if anyone is interested in those things, you're welcome to ask at the chat and we'll direct you to the right resources. Uh, next slide. So as part of the 2022 JMM in Seattle, MSRI's plan is, of course, uh, we always participate in the NSF funded um, All Math Institutes reception, the meetings of the Institute Directors, and the Mathematical Sciences Diverse, the Mathematical Sciences Institute's Diversity Initiative meetings. Um, and of course, MSRI has a donor reception. But um, as part of our mission to foster the research and develop talent, MSRI hosts special sessions at the JMM to highlight um, our programs beyond our standard semester-long topical research programs and scientific workshops. Um, for 2022, we have five hours of special sessions um, uh, and research showcases that we're planning to host, um, which are highlighting our adjoint program, which is the African Diaspora Joint Mathematics Workshop, uh, which is a year-long program that hosts a two-week in-person session at MSRI, uh, followed by uh, a year-long uh, continuing research plan, um, which is uh, U.S. mathematicians, especially from the African diaspora, who are working on topical research uh, in small groups. Uh, for those who are interested in applying or sharing this with your community, the deadline is February 1st to apply, and you can learn more at msri.org slash adjoint. Uh, we also hold sessions for our uh, summer research in mathematics program. Uh, this is a uh, summer program for small groups of women and gender expansive individuals, uh, which is aimed at supporting research completion and in-person collaboration for those whose research may have been disproportionately affected by various obstacles from family obligations, uh, professional isolation, or access to funding. Uh, and so that is aimed at um, completing research uh, papers and publications. And so uh, people who participate in that program, which was not held in 2020, but which will be in 2021 uh, due to the COVID pandemic, um, will be joining us. And of course, our MSRI UP students, which is our research experience for undergraduates. Ellen, do you want to add anything to MSRI's yeah, plan? Maybe just to say that the adjoint is having this year a special session, which is tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon. Yes. So for anyone who'd like to know more about the adjoint program. Uh, but yes, so thank you very much. That is MSRI's participation and we're happy to answer questions or direct uh, any questions that may also be related to the um, NSF funded math institutes in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jen, and thank Helen as well. Um, our next presenter is Danielle Shield, uh, the president of the International Linear Algebra Society. Danielle? Uh, Thank you for <clears throat> giving me the opportunity to speak at this panel. Thank you, Martin, Catherine. Uh, we are uh, 
very thrilled to be a new partner for next year. Next slide, please. Uh, most people don't know who we are, so let me tell you that uh, we've been around. Someone is speaking. Uh, so we are, uh, we've been around for 30 years or more, and the whole goal is to encourage activities on linear algebra. So we, among other things, we sponsor linear algebra lectures in other conferences. Uh, we have several prizes and recognition. Uh, we have a research journal, which is turned 25 years last year. Um, and we have our newsletter that goes to all members. We hold uh, regular conferences. Next slide, please. And uh, we have a, uh, an agreement with the SIAM Activity Group on Linear Algebra. So they have the conference every three years. And the other two years, we have our conference. <clears throat> this year, which is 2021, because of the pandemic, we are embedding our conference with them. Our 2020 conference were, was going to be in Ireland, was postponed, and it will be happening next summer. Um, so we have a <clears throat> very diverse and international group of members, researchers in linear algebra, some people interested in education in linear algebra as well. Um, next slide, please. So we are uh, new to come to the JMM, although many of our members, including myself, have been coming to the JMM for years. But uh, the new aspects is that we have a lecture uh, to highlight a current research topic every year, and we guarantee that we have a few special sessions. Uh, probably on combinatorial matrix theory, non-negative matrices, applications. We have uh, different members proposing many sessions. Uh, we will continue to have our conferences, our prices. Mm -hmm. So in a way, uh, we'll be more like SIAM, although we are much smaller, and not so much like the ASL or AWM, who uses the JML as the main meeting place. Uh, Thank you, and I'll open for questions when it's, next, when it's the right moment. Okay, thank you, Danielle. Our next speaker is Saul Garfunkel from Comap Inc. Hi, um, I'm Saul Garfunkel. Um, I almost did the, and for all practical purposes, but I'll stop that. Um, and I'm the executive director of, of Comap. Um, we're relatively young. Uh, you'll see the uh, banner that we're just 40 years old uh, this year, but we are a, a nonprofit organization. Next slide, please. Um, that uh, is whose mission is to simply improve the mathematics education for all students of all ages. And we do that through being the answer to the question, what's this stuff good for? So uh, all of our work has been in, in showing students contemporary applications of mathematics and mathematical modeling. Um, we've done things in, we have materials, curriculum materials in print, in video, uh, in multimedia formats. We have a quarterly undergraduate journal, the UMAP journal, um, our newsletter consortium and uh, entire uh, textbook series at the high school and at the college level. Um, and more recently, uh, we have developed, well, more recently, it's been 35 years when I think about it, uh, we've developed a number of international mathematical modeling contests at the uh, college level and at the high school level. Um, last, well, let's not say last year, a year and a half ago, pre-COVID, um, our MCM, ICM contest had over 26,000 three-person teams working on mathematical modeling uh, problems. I, I should say that we never uh, 
invented or created the contests for the purpose of simply rewarding smart students. The purpose of the contests was to encourage students and faculty um, to better understand mathematical modeling processes and to infuse the mathematical modeling into the, our, the, our nation's curricula, both at the pre-college level and at the college level. Uh, next slide. Um, and that has been remarkably successful. Um, as, as you can see through our work with GAME and with other uh, publications, the uh, Common Core and other statements of people about education and where it should go, ma mathematical modeling has become something more than it was. I mean, uh, 40 years ago, I had a, we had fights about should modeling be in the curriculum or was it going to take up too much time? And now we have people coming and saying, well, how do I teach it? What do I do tomorrow? Yeah, we agree it's important, but what's the best way to incorporate modeling? And that's what we've done at JMM this year and what we see ourselves doing more and more at JMM in 2022 and, and beyond, namely showing, yes, the materials, the, uh, yes, examples of what good modeling practices are, but also talking, showing, having students and teachers with successful programs showing people what do you do Monday? How do you incorporate modeling effectively? So this year we've had uh, two um, major sessions, uh, all yesterday, um, a block, two blocks in one day with multiple speakers talking about how they use modeling in the classes, how they introduce it, um, experiences with the contests. And we've also um, planning um, and have done in the past, but now starting uh, next year to have many more um, workshops and also um, uh, receptions um, to, uh, well, what one just, we like to drink, but more importantly, having receptions where we can show, uh, recruit new judges and reward those people who've done the judging. You know, when you talk about having 25,000, 26,000, papers uh, coming in of 25 or 30 pages, 25 pages now of mathematical modeling, you need a, a good number of serious judges to work on those. And people do this, at, well, at, mostly out of the goodness of their hearts. And so we want to help and show our appreciation and recruit more. We also um, have some awards that are being presented uh, to some of the better papers uh, sponsored by our our partners, including of course AMS, and we will help hopefully join in at the JMM award ceremony. Um, I can't tell you how happy I am that Comap is now a partner in JMM, and I look forward to working with all of you um, now and in the future uh, to, to for the new reimagined uh, JMM. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, Saul. Okay, and our final presenter is uh, Daniel Klein from, from the Julia Robinson Mathematics Festival. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Klein. I'm the executive director of the Julia Robinson Mathematics Festival. Um, Prior to COVID, if you uh, aren't aware of what we've been doing since 2007, we've been running in-person festivals around the world. And you can see some of the wonderful pictures that we've collected over the years. Um, the way that a festival works is we choose a central location. We have tables set up. Um, each table has a different mathematical activity, usually involving some sort of manipulative or some interactive element that uh, kids can play around with. Um, each table has a trained facilitator that guides students through their uh, uh, discovery through their mathematical activity. Um, and students have full agency over the mathematics that they learn. They get to choose which activities they want to do and how long they want to spend at each activity. Um, and the goal of uh, our festivals is to show kids that math isn't just memorizing formulas and learning procedures, um, but it's something that you can play with. It's something that you can engage with um, and to show kids to provide kids the opportunities of playing with math the same way that mathematicians get to play with math in, 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 in academia. 
Um, the other uh, primary goal that we have at uh, JRMF is to uh, provide students with uh, learning opportunities where they get to collaborate with others to show students that math isn't just something that they compete over for grades or prizes, but it's something that they can work together on um, to make the world a better place. Uh, next slide. Um, since COVID, um, we've had to uh, adapt the way that we do things since we can no longer do in-person festivals. Um, since about uh, February or March of last year, we've gone fully digital. Um, and the major thing, the major uh, offerings that we now provide are weekly webinars for students. Um, every uh, Sunday, we release a new activity along with uh, slides with uh, sequenced questions um, that we develop along with mathematicians and math enthusiasts in our community, as well as digital apps to allow students to get that same manipulative based feel that they would get in person, but in a digital way. Um, and then on Saturday, we all come together uh, in one big Zoom meeting. We introduce the problem, break out into breakout rooms of four to six students. And with trained facilitators, we guide students through uh, their self-discovery through some fun activities that range from everything from uh, game theory to topology to number theory to discrete mathematics um, in ways that are accessible for students of all ages. We have students as young as second grade um, and as old uh, as high school, uh, but our activities also engage uh, uh, PhD candidates, professors, um, and math lovers of all ages. Um, so that's our primary offering that we've been doing, and you can find more information on that on our website, jrmf.org. Um, but some other things that uh, we started doing at the end of last year that we're going to be continuing doing this year are uh, webinars on request. So if you want to provide the same kind of digital webinar experience to your communities and your students that we do for our students um, every single week, uh, we'll work with you to set up the Zoom meeting, to find facilitators, to choose the activities. Um, we do as much work as you want us to do, um, and we can help you put on the same kinds of events that we've been a, uh, privileged and uh, to, to be able to do uh, since COVID started. Um, we've also been working on developing professional developments for teachers, and we've now worked with school districts all over the country, um, including uh, the New Brunswick School District in New Jersey, the LA Unified School District, um, and uh, teachers from uh, uh, New Mexico as well. Um, we're going to be continuing doing professional development events, and so if you're interested in one of those for the educators in your community, again, you can reach out to us. Um, through our website at jrmf.org or by emailing us at info at jrmf.org. Um, all of the resources that we've been developing over the uh, last couple of years, including all of the slides and all of the apps are freely available on our website. Um, and as long as you have an internet connection, you can access them. Okay. Next slide. Uh, so in terms of the JMM, we haven't uh, exactly finalized exactly what we'll be doing for, for the JMM, um, but the uh, two major things that we'll be doing are interactive demonstrations of our activities um, and in, uh, informing people on how to, uh, to stay connected with us and get continued support for fun mathematical activities um, uh, even after the conference. Um, in terms of the interactive demonstrations, we'll be, having, uh, we'll be demonstrating some of our favorite activities uh, in the exhibition hall during the welcome reception and throughout the conference, um, we'll, we'll be using unused booth space, we'll be using unused rooms, um, and we'll be set up all throughout the conference in various different locations so that you can experience the type of fun math that our kids get to experience during, during our webinars and our in-person festivals. Uh, we found that the best way to really learn about what we do and, and why what we do is powerful is to experience it yourself and to uh, have fun playing with some deep mathematics that gets at the heart of, uh, of some of the most fundamental mathematical concepts. Um, another big push that we're going to be doing this year as well is we want to be start creating activities that have more real world connections. Um, last year, we built upon the gerrymandering activity that was presented at some JMM at some past e event, uh, but we also developed uh, our own activities for pool testing, uh, voting uh, systems, um, and different communication structures. And so we'll be continuing that trend to show uh, to demonstrate how to bring real world uh, socially relevant events into uh, the math classroom uh, in, in meaningful and powerful ways that involve joyfulness and collaboration. Um, the last major thing that we'll be doing at the JMM is providing information. So we'll have a 
booth set up and as well as panels and and uh, other speaking events where we'll be informing people how to uh, keep in touch with us um, as well as make use of our resources and the uh, supports that we provide so that you can run your own uh, online events and hopefully by 2022 also in-person uh, e e e events as well and as you can see from this map we've already connected digitally with people all over the world each one of those red dots is a different community around the world that we've been able to help run online uh, webinars um, and prior to COVID we were planning on doing 120 festivals worldwide all over the globe um, and so we're hoping to continue that trend uh, in the upcoming years. Um, if you have any questions about how to connect with us, um, about the resources that we have available, um, or anything else about JRMF, feel free to reach out during the Q&A. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, that ends the um, presentation part of this, and um, we now go to the Q&A. And so we have some questions. Catherine has been busily working answering questions uh, in the Q&A. But we, we have some open questions that I'm going to read and ask a panelist. So the first question is to Jared Vanema uh, about a, a classification. Where would teaching education go? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, it, well, it, it fits a couple of different places. As I mentioned, what the 101A uh, uh, section is about teaching uh, specific subjects and mathematics education is one of those subjects. Uh, it also appears, for example, uh, later on, on under course and curriculum design, there's a section on uh, the mathematics education major. Uh, so it appears a couple of different places, but it, uh, it, it does appear in the list. We have an, the second question is also to you. It's from uh, Amanda Sernevi. What category would be most appropriate for sessions relating to math circles? Yeah, that's a good question. So I, I described in my talk uh, 101A, B, and C briefly. 101D is titled Teaching and Learning Outside the Classroom. And uh, math circles fits there. There are two categories. One is, uh, oh, let's see, 101D04 is uh, about how to organize a math circle for students and teachers. Uh, the 08 category is uh, activities and problems for uh, math circles. So there are, there are two different uh, places where it fits. Thank you very much, Jared. Okay, the third question is from Holly McNamee, and I think it's directed at Katrin. In reference to the question about teaching, how might someone get connected with a special session if they had something to share and may fit within an existing special session but aren't connected enough to create one? So I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this question. Um, when when you have, you, you because you have something that you want to share, you'll go to the JMM portal to submit your abstract. And when you go to submit your abstract, you'll have an option to uh, request that it be considered for a particular special session. So all the special sessions will have already been decided upon and they'll be listed for you. And you can look through and say, oh, please consider my please consider my abstract for that special session. Then the organizers of those sessions have an opportunity to read your abstract and say, yeah, this does fit and include you on their in their session or to say, you know what, this doesn't fit or I'm sorry, we've already filled up, we don't have any more room, in which case your abstract, uh, you actually get to choose, you actually get to say, if my abstract is not accepted into the special session, I just wanna withdraw it or you can say, put me into a contributed paper session. So if you're accepted into a special session, then you'll have a, a longer talk because those talks are typically um, you know, for 25 minutes or so with five minutes of question, They're, they start on the half hours. Um, and then if it uh, turns out not being accepted, then it would be um, into a contributed paper session and they will be clustered with other contributed paper abstracts that have the same or similar codes associated with them. So it, it will, you know, you'll be with, with people who are, who are similarly classifying their abstracts, but at that point you would be one of the shorter talks that are started at, they start every quarter hour. So those are usually 12 minute talks with a few minutes for questions. Great, we have another question. And I think 
um, Catherine, and maybe also to you, is about um, when will, the, from John Grantham, when will the site for JMM 2022, um, oh, it's, it, maybe it's, it's already been answered, okay. Um, I'm just, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, so we're getting some later questions that I haven't screened yet. So um. I see. Okay, so so yeah, so yeah. so there's there there was a question. I think it's been answered about uh, when JMM 2024 will be chosen. The site. Mm -hmm. So that's already been chosen. Um. So no JMM. So next year 2022 will be in Seattle, and then 2023 will be in Boston, and then 2024 will be in San Francisco. Okay, and so then this is another question from an anonymous attendee. The West Coast has nice weather in January. <laughs> um, it would be nice to return to New Orleans if the meetings are not a bit smaller. So, um, so yeah. If yeah, New Orleans is a really- I wanna go back to New Orleans. <laughs> who, yeah, who New Orleans is a super popular place for us and we, we outgrew them, uh, the JMM outgrew them. So um, we're not really sure. Um, how, what the size of the JMM might settle down to be um, over time. We, uh, we book our convention centers uh, multiple years in advance. So, you know, I think that as we sort of settle into the new reimagined JMM and have a better sense of, of what our size is, if it turns out that it's a smaller meeting, then we might be able to consider a different set of cities and, and New Orleans could be one of them. But I understand it is a very popular, popular site for people. Indeed, indeed. I think that is all the all the open questions in the Q and A. Um, so there's no uh, there's no open questions, and there's I, we still actually surprisingly I thought we were going to run out of time. We have a, a few a few minutes. I have a question here from somebody who couldn't put it into the question and answer, so she asked it in the um, chat. In the chat, it says I can't seem to ask a question in the Q and A. Could we talk about the AMS, JMM's thinking about the 2022 conference possibly being hybrid, a combination of in-person and virtual? So yes, I can talk about that. Um, we are learning a lot by having virtual sectional meetings from this past fall and then having this experience with this virtual JMM. We are learning a lot from it. Um, of it, I think uh, uh, the concept of a hybrid meeting where some people are in person and others are attending virtually is sounds wonderful. Um, right now, it appears to be prohibitively expensive. Um, the, the amount of work that we had to put into a virtual meeting uh, matches or exceeds the amount of staff and time and work that we put into a in-person meeting. Um, moreover, the expense to live stream through a convention center's AV setup, um, you know, we right now looks to be pretty prohibitive. Um, we're, we're open to it, we're considering it, we're thinking about different models, we know the world is changing. We're also deeply um, aware and concerned about the fact that uh, many people's travel money is, is just evaporated um, because of all of the um, pressures, the financial pressures on, on the universities, you know, with the people which just won't have the the ability to travel. So, so we're really aware of it. Um, I know that the AMS will be stepping up and providing um, continued and, and more, you know, sort of webinars and online opportunities for, for, for learning and teaching and sharing. Um, but, but right now, I, I think it's probably, right now it appears prohibitive for us to have hybrid meetings of the way you might be thinking about it. Now we could have something where, you know, one weekend there's a hybrid sectional meeting and then the next weekend there's an in-person sectional meeting. Our sectional meetings are often held at universities that might be able to easily live stream things through their classrooms because they're already set up to do that. So you might see something um, at our at our sectional meetings before you'd see anything like this at the JMM. And that's really just my best guess now based on where things stand. Sorry, I have some more questions coming in. Um, there's another question about whether there'll be remote sessions, but I think you've covered that. And there's a question from Melanie Brown. Do we yet know if the conference discount will be the same for all Level A partners? That is the intent. Okay. Um, I think 
yeah, so apart from the, the idea of like having hybrid, there might be the possibility of, uh, Lauren Rose asked about having remote sessions where you might just have some sessions remotely rather than trying to do both in person. Yep. Yeah. yep, exactly. And that's the kind of thing that we'll, we'll be exploring. Okay. Um, it seems to be and all- we're at 6.30, so it's actually kind of good timing. Oh, here comes a question. Let me find another question. Oh, no, no. Oh, did I miss anything? Is MAA still a level A partner? So at this point in time, the MAA is not a partner at all. I'm still in conversations with them, as I am with many other organizations. So um, the people who spoke to, at today's session are the people who have who, who've gone through the whole um, endeavor of, of having conversations with us about partnerships, getting everything approved through their governance structures, signing a memorandum of understanding, et cetera. So I'm at various stages of conversation with folks. The MAA will be present at the JMM in the sense that some programming will be there, um, but right now they are not a partner, which means that, the, um, and they're, they're not a partner. They might become a partner. I'm hoping they'll become a partner. Um, if they choose to become a level A partner, then MAA members would receive the discounted registration. And the reason that that's only for level A partners is that level A partners have more skin in the game. They're putting more money into it and more um, efforts into the meeting. It's a more significant meeting for their organization. Um, and, and because they have more skin in the game, you know, that includes the, the, our, our, our ability to be able to offer their members a discount to the registration. Okay, and another question just came in. Um, is there a list of the partner level somewhere? I'm assuming that's on the AMS website. Um, uh, I'm looking at Karen. No, I don't think it is on there. Um, so, so right now our level, level A partners are AWM, NAM, ASA, and SIAM. We have one level B partner, ASL, and then level C partners are COMAP, uh, ILAS, Julie Robinson, Math Festival, MSRI, and PIMU Epsilon. Well, to a point that the, Judith's point, it might be nice to have that up on the website. So, right, yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Very good. Um, looks like we don't have any open questions. As, uh, we, do we, do we um, I guess- uh, We should just kind of say we're at the end. Thank you. Yeah, we're, I guess we're at the end. Um, it has been a great discussion, great presentations. Um, thank you all for participating. And um, hopefully we'll all see you uh, in Seattle in, in 2022.